Hi friends, you are back with me, uh, Professor Girish Kukreja, with me to discuss what you call as some of the questions related to biochemistry in general. Uh, yes, we know we will be talking about microbiology, uh, but yet, yet microbiology and biochemistry, both of them they go hand in hand. So today, uh, yes, what you can see here, we will be talking about more of colorimetry and spectrophotometry. Most of the practicals which are involved in biochemistry, they involve a uh, use of lot of colorimetry and spectrophotometry. So let us, uh, what you call as have a look at the general questions which you may be faced with in the viva in your examinations when you are uh, facing a viva especially for a course on biochemistry which has many practicals related to colorimetry and spectrophotometry yes the first one like when we are talking about colorimetry and spectrophotometry the formula which we are encountered with is your a is equal to epsilon cl uh, we know that this is derived from the Beers and Lambert's law. Stay tuned with us for more on Beers and Lambert's law and more on this. But the question which we have today is explain the terms in A is equal to epsilon Cl. So yes, A we know is the absorption. So A it stands for the uh, absorption. So whatever value you get there, the absor absorbance what you call. So that is what is called is your A. So your absorbance uh, which you get at that particular wavelength that is your A. Yes, epsilon it refers to as the molar uh, extinction coefficient. So molar extinction coefficient of the material which is absorbing the light at its wavelength. Uh, the units we have 1 by uh, mole into centimeter. So that is the value of your epsilon or that is what epsilon designates the molar uh, extinction coefficient. See you have the concentration of the absorbing uh, material right. So concentration of the uh, absorbing material and in molars right so that will give you what you call as concentration in molars that is your c l is the what you call as uh, path length right so uh, the light path uska jo length hai in that particular covered so that particular path length uh, is what is called as your l so in most of the standard uh, spectrophotometers and colorimeters we have l is equal to 1 centimeter yes uh, let's go to the next one when the reading in the colorimeter or spectrophotometer in which range uh, is the most accurate so you have a range of readings on your colorimeter and spectrophotometer so in which particular range will you get these particular readings um, in a proper order which are not biased or uh, which are not what you call as uh, up to the mark which are most accurate so the range which is generally said is between 0 0.05 to 0 0.7 this is the range where uh, the readings they are said to be most accurate below and above this range uh, these readings though uh, accepted in many cases but uh, these are the ones which will give you a most accurate reading so if your what you call a solution is highly concentrated the reading is going above that uh, bring it uh, diluted so come into this particular range because here you have the most accurate readings the next one uh, which covets are used for readings in the UV range yes uh, most of the times in the spectrophotometer you use uh, what you call as your glass covets we have uh, plastic covets also but these glass and plastic covets they absorb the light below 310 nanometer if we're talking about the uv range we are talking about 260 280 something like that so below that when we are talking about below 300 uh, it is the glass or your uh, plastic both of them they are opaque they absorb this particular light so to avoid that particular interference we either use a quartz covet or you may use a covet which is made of silica so a silica covet or quartz covet which is transparent at this particular wavelength below 310 also you will find that these are the covets which are preferred when we are taking the readings in the uv range the next one what is meant by the hyper or hypochromic effect we generally encounter this many times that there is a hyperchromic effect there is a hypochromic effect so as the name suggests hyper refers to increase and hypo it refers to decrease in the absorbance so when we have a particular increase or decrease in the absorbance for example your double stranded dna it is being melted so you will find that there is a hyperchromic effect so as the 
DNA goes from double stranded to single stranded, its absorbance goes on increasing. So that is called as the hyperchromic effect. Reverse will be possible when a single stranded DNA, uh, the what you call as complementary strands, they are coming together, you may have a hypochromic effect. So in the absorbance is increasing, it is a hyperchromic effect. When it is decreasing, it is the uh, hypochromic effect. Uh, the next one goes, what are the basic components of a UV uh, or a UV visible spectrophotometer, right? So basic component, as I told, uh, you will have three basic components. One is what is called as a uh, light source, right? Uh, the light source is something which is uh, required, right? When it is a visible light, you require a particular light source. When it is a UV light, you require a particular light source. So, a light source, then a mechanism to select a particular wavelength in that particular range. So, mechanism to select a particular wavelength. So, you may have different mechanisms to select the particular you know, prism or you have filters or anyway. So, you are going to use what you call as mechanisms to select the particular wavelength, a light source. Uh, you will have a chamber where you are going to put your uh, covet which is containing your solution. So a chamber uh, for introduction of covet in the path length of that particular uh, light. So chamber to what to call as hold this particular covet in the light path. So your sample which is there uh, that will be what to call as properly present in that particular light path. So you will need a chamber to hold this particular covet which will bring your sample in the light path. And the third one is a photocell. Now this particular photocell, it may either uh, detect the amount of light that is absorbed by your particular sample or the percentage of light that has been transmitted through that particular sample. So these are three basic components uh, which are present in a typical uh, spectrophotometer. What is the light source uh, that is used, right? The light source that is used for this particular process we have uh, uh, in UV light or if it is a visible light as I told you may go for uh, tungsten filament if it is in the visible range if it is in the uh, UV light we have what is called as a hydrogen what you call as bulb or you may have uh, the deuterium lamps which will what you call as serve as a source of your light in the UV range so if it is a visible range we have a tungsten as a light source and if it is in the UV range you have the hydrogen or deuterium so stay tuned with us for more in microbiology and biochemistry with me professor girish kukreja thank you